Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today it is time for a review of the 1931 biography by Roy Franklin Nichols, Franklin Pierce, Young Hickory of the Granite Hills. Roy uh, Franklin Nichols, a um, American historian, got his uh, doctorate in uh, history from Columbia University, um, perhaps most widely known for uh, his Pulitzer Prize winning book from 1948, The Disruption of American Democracy, um, a book which really uh, attempts to theorize a lot of um, things based off of kind of the transition um, into the Civil War, kind of the several years in the United States before the Civil War, and in many ways serves as a continuation of what he talks about in this biography of Franklin Pierce. Now, Franklin Pierce, again, 14th president of the United States, originally from New Hampshire, had experience as a representative and as a senator up there, um, was in the Mexican-American War, uh, served in that as well, and took over at a time when um, he was a Democrat and the Whig Party at the time um, was really on the outs. It was in the middle of dissolving. Um, and Pierce is widely considered today to be one of our worst presidents, and I think if you were to survey like the, among the most obscure presidents that the United States has ever had, Pierce would probably be at the top of the list or pretty close to it. Um, he is, again, one of those kind of faceless individuals who sort of acted or did not act, if you will, in the um, transition again um, the political kind of collapse of the United States in the 1850s leading up to the Civil War. Um, the difference between Pierce and Miller Fillmore, who was the last president who I talked about, is that Fillmore, um, in many ways, was kind of anti-slavery, but was also cautious about how to act upon um, those convictions. Um, whereas Franklin Pierce, I don't know if I would say that he was entirely pro-slavery, at least based off of what I've read, um, but he was very anti-abolitionist. He had a uh, hatred for that movement and uh, really fought against them his entire presidency. Because of that and because of his support of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, he was very unpopular very early on. The Democratic Party um, had to ditch him, essentially, for the next election um, to have any chance of winning, even though... Um, you know, at the time, the Whigs were gone. The Republican Party was just getting started. Um, and Pierce ended up being this kind of ornery figure who was never really trusted for the remainder of his um, life. There's a story about how he, um, after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, was one of the only people in his neighborhood who didn't put out an American flag after the fact. Um, he was not a fan of Lincoln by any means. So, you know, Pierce is this individual who has been lost to history a little bit, and perhaps rightfully so. There's only about two extant biographies of him, one being this Nichols biography, one being a two-volume series by Peter Wallner, which is also out of print and extremely difficult to find. Um, you're, you're paying easily about 100 bucks um, on eBay if you're trying to buy those books. Um, and this one, I mean, I'll even show this one. Um, you know, this is a leather-bound book that I, you know, stumbled upon at a used bookstore. So, I mean, I'm grateful to have it. Um, but again, <laughs> um, I cannot say that this was the most interesting read in the world. The positives, you know, this is a biography from 1931. I think this is the oldest presidential biography that I've read so far for this, or one of the oldest at least. And to its credit, it reads better than I was expecting. Um, the pros is not too dense. I will say it gets a little bit too flowery, if you will. Um, he the, the sentence structure sometimes can go for a bit more of a literary bend, shall we say. Um, and I don't think Nichols is naturally quite a good enough writer to sustain that um, or to make it sound natural. It just kind of, it, it sounds a bit odd at times. Um, but it's not altogether a ridiculously dense book in terms of text. Uh, where it becomes dense is just in terms of information. And the information that is being discussed for the most part is policy-related stuff. Um, Nichols seems to agree 
with the popular consensus that Franklin Pierce is not all that interesting. Um, his personal life is not really talked about apart from kind of the major high points, which is his marriage to his wife, um, the tragic and horrific death of their son um, when they were on a train ride to, um, um, not, uh, to Washington, D.C., I think, or at least traveling shortly before the Pierce inauguration, um, a really just horrible death. Um, that affected Pierce and his wife for the remainder of their lives. Of course, that is talked about, but not to any sort of meaningful degree. Uh, the focus of the book is on the political accomplishments of Pierce, um, especially during his presidency. And because of that, it gets very dense, gets very in the weeds, and it becomes kind of this history of the times, history of the political climate. Um, and that is fascinating for the um, general historian, maybe, who is already familiar with this period. But in this case, if you're, you know, someone who has maybe a passing familiarity, I there's there's going to be a lot that is going to go over your head that is going to require a second reread, a third reread, a fourth reread or something. Um, and Pierce himself will sometimes get a little bit lost in the shuffle because of that, because, again, I don't think the author fundamentally finds him all that interesting. Um, one positive that I do have about the book towards the end is the kind of final chapter. And this isn't included in every edition of the book. I think this was something that Nichols wrote for a second printing um, a couple of decades or so after the original one. Um, and the final essay is interesting because Nichols actually tries to grapple with where Pierce stands in his overall career um, compared to presidents. His just kind of making sense of his legacy because his legacy is so, even in that time, um, was very obscure, very forgotten, and very glossed over. And Nichols doesn't have a lot of, like, super positive things to say, but he does try to, again, kind of pick and choose, like, where, you know, what Pierce's approach was. Lifelong politician who was, um, because of that, had, like, ambitions but also wasn't necessarily a natural fit for the environment of Washington, D.C. He was someone who was maybe a bit more of a natural fit for, like, the Northeastern political scene. Um, one other piece that I have not mentioned is that Pierce was someone who struggled with drinking, who was um, arguably alcoholic, and um, the culture in D.C. was very um, liquor-friendly, shall we say, and in a ways that kind of pulled Pierce in and potentially derailed him some. Also, maybe estranged him from his wife, um, who was very against that sort of thing. And so because of that, you have someone who is just really an outcast from the get-go, um, who is trying to make some sort of like meaningful political change. And even though he was relative, a relatively outgoing fellow, you know, and someone who was well-liked among people he was close with. Um, I think he was close with the author Nathaniel Hawthorne, for instance. Um, Pierce was also not a very decisive fellow. The whole kind of theme you get from this book is that Pierce is someone who would much rather decisions be made for him rather than him making the decisions himself. And so that frame of mind essentially um, steers him through this entire pre-Civil War crisis. So it's an interesting summary, and I would say that if you have the opportunity to read at least that piece, um, I think that is very well worth it. I think it's very well done. Um, but the whole book, again, I mean, it's it's very dense. There's a lot happening here. And, um, you know, if you're someone like me who is trying to be a completist reading all presidential biographies, you don't have a lot of choice with Franklin Pierce. This is probably going to be your best bet. But you do have to be kind of prepared for what you're going to get. It's very packed with info again prose isn't too, isn't too bad prose is re reasonably readable but um you know this is not this is not light reading by any means i definitely struggled with this on some level so i would not give this a hearty recommendation um and i think it would be interesting to read maybe the peter walner book if i were to get my hands on it or some more modern treatment of franklin pierce because you know i think reading about these quote-unquote boring presidents, um, I think that can be done, or writing about them can be done well. 
I think the review that I did on the biography of John Tyler that I read, I think that was a fantastic book, one of the best presidential biographies I've read so far. So it can be done well. Um, but I just think, you know, there's not enough here to incentivize someone to go back and read a Franklin Pierce or a Zachary Taylor biography. Millard Fillmore maybe could be interesting, but point is, not great, but you don't have a lot of choice with Franklin Pierce, so if you're being a completist, this is kind of what you got to work with, so it is what it is. With that, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Hit that bell for notifications and tell a friend as well. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.